more than a church, more than an outreach, all that and much more. C-L-U-B, Christ Living Undivided Bride. Welcome. A revival coming through the body of Christ. This is a revival coming through no big eyes, little U's, or aiming betweens. This is a revival. Speak up God. Doesn't our Bible say, He who abides under the shadow of the Almighty God shall be covered? By his wings. Hallelujah. That spiritual creation that's inside of you, that one the devil's been trying to tear up, is going to come out and come alive. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Welcome to Revival for Christ Club, a ministry with a vision built on a plan, the Word of God. I'm Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover, and this is my beautiful wife. Apostle Jenny Vanover. And we want to welcome you, honey. I am so excited. It is December. I I'm so happy. This is such a wonderful time for all the children of God. We can lift up our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and celebrate Him the way we truly feel in our hearts. Amen. For us, Christmas is one of the most important times of the year. We're excited about it because it's an opportunity to lift up Jesus Christ and to put His name on the forefront of everything that we do. And here at Revival for Christ, well, that's the most important thing to us. Lifting up Jesus. You know, the Bible didn't say if we lifted up ourselves, we would be drawn unto him. It said, Christ be lifted up, he would draw all men unto him. You see, it's not about lifting us up. It's not about glorifying and exalting ourselves. It's about lifting him up. It's not about building kingdoms that are for ourselves. It's about building a kingdom for him. With that in mind, we're so glad you tuned in today. We want to encourage you and encourage the calling and the purpose that you have in your life. We want to fill it with word and revelation so it'll spark up and come alive in you. Because the real revival that's coming to this country is not coming through one person or one individual. It's coming through the body of Christ as we work together. And that includes you. We're glad you tuned in to Revival for Christ Club today. We are club, C-O-U-B, Christ, living, undivided bride. We're so happy you decided to join us today. We're a ministry with a vision. Not built on a man, but built on a plan. The Word of God. You know, I'm so excited about this month, as I was telling you before. Being in the month of December, I'm happy we got our new yeah. Christmas set up. So we're excited to have the Christmas set up. But, you know, one of the things that just is such a blessing to me is to know that our children are serving the Lord with us. That's one of the biggest blessings we have. And, and you know, I think so many years ago when our son, Jordan, our youngest son, was really little, you, you taught him how to play on the piano. You started teaching him on the piano. And now he plays all the yes, time. Yes, and I, I, I'm so happy, and, and those of you who are parents and who understand and who know that if you have a child that you've taught something and, and that now you see that child grow up in church and use that talent and give for God, nothing gives you greater joy. And this month, we got to share this. Our son is getting married. Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, when this program airs, when this program airs, he'll already be married. So we have a new daughter. Her name is Angela. And God bless you, Angela, our new daughter. Well, I'll tell you what, with all that said, why don't we put Jordan up here? We've got a great song coming from Jordan. This was recorded very recently. So I want you to sit back and relax. This is a song my son wrote off of one of my wife's messages called The Jordan River. So here it is. Sit back and relax. Let our son Jordan bless you with his compassion and desire for God. And this song, Jordan. The children of Israel, they had to cross the Jordan River to reach the promised land. And a lot of them never thought they would make it because they had walked in circles for 40 years. But it took someone, somebody new, a new era of somebody to come in and say, we can't think like we did before. We got to leave the old stuff back behind the Jordan River. And if we're going to get to the promised land on the other side, the old things have to pass away. Who I am has to change and be different. I can't step into a new era as the same old person I was before. A place of miracles and mighty works. The Son of God baptized by holy words. A path to the other side where your greatness and your future collide. A place of vision and destiny. A secret hiding that's in plan for me. See the promised land right in front of me. But if I look back now, I'll be 
swallowed by the sea If I could get down to the river Jordan My excuses would be If I could get down to the river Jordan There's a breakthrough for me If I could get down in the river Jordan My excuses would leave I could get down to the river Jordan There's a breakthrough for me Yeah of miracles and mighty works the son of God baptized by holy words a path to the other side where your greatness and your future lie a place of vision and destiny a secret out and that's been planned for me see the promised land right in front of me if I look back now I'll be swallowed by the sea if I could get down in the river and Jordan my excuses would leave if I could get down in the river and Jordan there's a breakthrough for me If I can get down in the river Jordan my excuses would leave If I can get down in the river Jordan there's a breakthrough for me If I can get down in the river Jordan my excuses would leave If I can get down in the river Jordan there's a breakthrough for me Yeah See, on the other side, in that new era where God has called you to be, that's where your future belongs. So you can look behind you and tell your past that it can't control you anymore because you're going to get to the other side where God has called you to be. So let the old things pass away. Let the old things go away because I'm going to get to the other side. On the other side of the river Jordan, all things pass away. On the other side of the river Jordan, that's your victory. On the other side of the river Jordan, all things pass away. On the other side of the river Jordan, that's your victory. On the other side of the river Jordan, all things pass away. On the other side of the river Jordan, that's your victory. On the other side of the river Jordan, all things pass away. On the other side of the river Jordan, that's your victory. Yeah, yeah. Other side, I'm gonna get to. Other side, I'm gonna get to. Other side, where everything's made new. I'm gonna get to. The other side, I'm gonna get to. The other side, I'm gonna get to. The other side, where all I see is you. I'm gonna get to. The other side, I'm gonna get to. The other side, I'm gonna get to. The other side, where everything's made new. Jordan, my excuses would leave. If I could get down in the river, Jordan, there's a breakthrough for me. If I could get down in the river, Jordan, my excuses could leave. If I could get down in the river, Jordan, there's a breakthrough for me. If I could get down in the river, Jordan, my excuses would leave. If I could get down in the river, Jordan, there's a breakthrough for me. So I'm going down. Then I'm going down, I'm going down to get in the river. Then I'm going down. Praise the Lord. I love it when our son just gets up and shares his talent, shares his heart with the Lord. You know, not too long ago we had a revival, October Fest, with Brother Chuck. And um, there was a message that the Lord had me preach on that Sunday night called Hidden Wisdom. I'm going to play a little bit of that message for you here in just a second. 
But you see, I think one of the most important things that the church needs to realize right now at this particular juncture of history where we're facing all this end time things and all these elements coming up is to have the proper leadership and the proper ministry administration in the right place at the right time. Now, Jesus identified that leadership in Ephesians when he called some apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints and the unifying of the body of Christ. In just a few moments, we're going to get into hidden wisdom. And as we do, we're going to show you a little bit more about the function and the purpose of those different ministry administrations. Because the thing that makes it difficult is you have someone called to be a pastor trying to carry out an evangelist job, or you have someone called to be an evangelist trying to carry out a teacher's job. It's just not going to work because they don't have the spiritual qualifications to carry at that office. See, whenever God prepares you for whatever the calling may be, whether it's a pastor, whether it's a evangelist, whether it's a prophet, or whether it's someone like that. When God prepares that out, you have those characteristics, spiritual characteristics that have been put inside of you, and God wants to develop those. He develops them through His Word and Spirit, bringing you to the perfect thing you need to do with the calling that's been put in your life. So this message, I think, helps address that. It's called Hidden Wisdom, and it talks a little bit about uh, some of the great things in the different administrations, but it also talks about how to get that hidden wisdom out of the Word of God. So thanks for tuning in. Sit back and relax. Here's a message as it was recorded live at Revival for Christ Club in Moore, Oklahoma. It's called Hidden Wisdom. All right, we've been talking about during this revival, restoring our revelational roar. Now, Brother Chuck told you how to go from the ruins and get filled with glory. Amen. Praise God. We also talked to you about what it means to be spiritually immature, not understand your spiritual inheritance, and not be able to put it in operation. We talked about what happens as you gain spiritual maturity. Now today what I want to talk to you about is about fine-tuning that rule. Fine-tuning our position, our place, our responsibility in the kingdom of God. Amen? See, one thing I want you to know, we need to understand who it is that is of the power to establish us. Who is of the power to establish us in the ways of God? Let me explain something to you. Your flesh is not in the power to establish. Religion is not in the power to establish. Man's philosophy, man's knowledge, man's wisdom, man's understanding is not able to establish. But to him that is of the power. Oh, come on, somebody. Him that's of the power. Look out. Now, I told you at the start of this revival on a Wednesday night that ROAR, R-O-A-R, stands for Righteous Overcoming Anointed Revelation. The first step is righteousness. The first step is to get in right standing with God. How do we get in right standing with God? The first step, Brother Darrell, is to bring the flesh under subjection to the spirit and the anointing of God. The second step, Darrell, is to remember what John 6 and 63 says. It is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that brings understanding. It is the spirit that will establish you. It is the spirit that will lead you into things that are pleasing to the Lord. It's the spirit of God that will take that word and unlock at it wisdom, and knowledge, and understanding. See, once we get into right stand with God, then we're going to begin to understand, begin to comprehend Bishop, the significance and the importance of established truth. Because see, truth that hasn't been established is not truth. Truth, you're not listening to me, church. Truth that has not been established is not truth. It is opinion. It is philosophy. It is theory. It is hypothesis. How many understand what I'm saying today? Unless it's been established by the hand of God, it will serve no value. Unless it's been established by the spirit and the anointing of God, it will not establish you in the way of the Lord. It will not establish you in the kingdom of God. But see, as you begin to grow in that spiritual maturity, as you begin to take the bottle out of your mouth, and as you say, God, I'm tired of milk. I'm tired 
of the surface material. The Bible tells us those that are still using milk is because they're unskillful in the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of the Word of God. If you're still on the surface material, if you walked in and got saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and you ain't changed one bit in five years, it's time to rip that diaper off, throw that bottle down, and become the man or woman of God that He has called you to be. Play school is over. Preschool is over. High school is over. Y'all ain't listening to me. It is time for the armies of God to awake. It's time for the armies of God to open up their eyes. It's time for the armies of God to rise and allow the anointing of God to flow out of them. Now we're talking about the roar. Talking about righteous, overcoming, anointed revelation. See, the church has lost its revelational roar. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble today. Uh, the church has lost its revelational roar. Why is it lost its revelational roar? Because it's allowed it to be contaminated. It's allowed it to be polluted by man's wisdom, by man's knowledge, and by man's understanding. But you hear me, church, there's a purification that's taking place right now in the body of Christ. There's a spiritual purification that is removing religion, removing man's knowledge, and removing man's wisdom out of your tabernacle. Romans 16. Out of your temple. Let me start reading in the. Now to him that is of power to establish or to establish according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. And what is this? According to the what? I'm sorry, according to the what? I'm sorry, according to the what? Revelation of the mystery. Now church, you stay with me. He says in order. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. He said, in order for you to be established, in order for him to establish, according to the gospel of Jesus Christ. According to the revelation of mystery. Problem, Pastor. What if there is no revelation of mystery? What if there's nobody getting you? Revelation of the mystery. Are you then still able to be established? Are you still then able to be settled and set? Let me explain something to you. The Bible says God set up a five-fold ministry for the leadership of the church. He said apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teach us for the perfecting of the church. That is vision, direction, proclamation, establishment, and education. But the problem is, Oh, Lord, Jesus. Oh, I'm going to get in trouble. The problem is you got teachers trying to find revelation. Y'all ain't listen to me. You got pastors trying to mine revelation. You got evangelists trying to mine revelation. The only problem with that is God never gave them that assignment. You're not listening to me. God didn't give them that assignment. Honey, God doesn't need you to get up and give some weak, some water towel, some no powerful revelation. What God wants is men and women of God that have been called to mine revelation. Let them mine it. Let me explain something to you. It's a terrible analogy. It's the only one I can do quick. Think of it as a coal mine. You have miners that mine the coal. Then you have guys at the top process the coal, right? Then you have people sell the products of the coal, right? Same thing in the kingdom of God. We got miners. They mine revelation. Come on, hear me. You're not listening to me. We got miners. They mine revelation. Then we got processors, the pastors. They process that revelation and transform it into establishment. Oh, you're not listening to me. They take that revelation and they transform it to establish the body of Christ. And then the teachers, what do they do? 
They take that revelation and they educate. See, you got to understand, it's the calling. See, get the calling. When you're a pastor, you only see the word of God through the pastor's mentality. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you're a pastor, you have a pastor's mentality. You love people. You care about people. You reach out to people. Your wells of compassion are full. If you don't love people, if you don't bend over backwards for people, chances are you weren't called to be a pastor. You should keep looking. Amen? But herein has been the problem in the modern church. We eliminated the office of the apostle. We've eliminated the apostle or the office of the prophet. So your two revelational minors are gone. Come on, they're not even in the mix anymore. Y'all ain't listening to me. Your two revelational minors are gone. So now you're trying to process something you don't got. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. You're trying to process something you ain't got. And because you ain't got nothing, now you're trying to sell a lie. Oh, come on, hear me. Now you're trying to sell something. So what do you got to do with it, Brother Dale? You got to dress it up. You got to paint it up. Got to put some decorations on it. Got to make it look like it's God. Got to make it look like there's a move of God. Let me tell you some Josephine. When God shows up, he won't need your help to show that he's there. He won't need your decoration. When God shows up, he'll be there with a power in any way. Come on, somebody. What is the revelation? of the mystery, the divine ability to see into the true depth of the Word of God, to understand it beyond its surface, legalistic understanding, but to break, oh, you might say, break through the stone of the carnal man, break through the stone of the hardness of your carnal heart. And as God begins to break that down, His hand begins to release the oil. Oh, come on. The oil of anointing begins to flow. And with that oil of anointing, then knowledge begins to flow. See, revelation of the mystery is the power to establish. God brings spiritual establishment through active relationship with us, through His Word and Spirit. Unlocking the spiritual revelation of established truth. You guys have heard me preach this a lot. I'm going to just lay it out one more time for you. The Word without the Spirit is legalism. Nothing more, nothing else. The Bible says he has not made us able ministers of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. The Bible tells us he has made us able ministers of the New Testament and of the Spirit. So why do you keep running back to Old Testament philosophy to try to figure out the Word? We ain't going to start grabbing hold of something established. Amen? But I want you to get a hold of something. He says here. He says, you have You have to have established truth. Without established truth, there is no revelation. You can't get it. See, this is God's system. He set up the process of established truth so you could not put your agenda in it, so you could not put your mentality in it, so you could not manipulate it, change it, invalidate it, corrupt it, or pollute it with your carnality. See, see, there's two elements. To establish truth. I am God, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am nothing but truth. Can you say amen? But if you want truth, he said you're gonna have to use the elements to unlock the truth. The word without a spirit is legalism, it's religion, it's law. The spirit without the word is imbalanced. The spirit without the word is We get cosmic Christians, not spiritual Christians. Being cosmic and spiritual are two different things. 
being cosmic is you see spiritual things that do not exist. You see elements that you've made up in your mind because you want to seem like you got more spiritual significance than you actually do. So you want to make it sound like, hey, did you see that? Did you see this? No, I didn't see it, man. Then it wasn't there. Honey, let me tell you something. God shows you something. God tells you something. Everybody in the room's going to see it. Everybody's going to know God did. God's not going to hide over in the corner. If it's God, he's going to show everybody what he's doing. Amen? Here's the thing. Relationship and right standing with God, my friend, are not optional. See, we've, we've decided for too long these are optional things. Being in right standing with God is optional. You remember the word I just gave you at the beginning of the survival? Roar. R O A R. Righteous, overcoming, anointed revelation. You can't get to R without going through R. You're not listening to me. Y'all ain't listening to me. You can't get to revelation till you get to right standing. You can't get to right standing till you begin to start producing that element of righteousness. That means you've got a relationship with your heavenly father. It's not written on a page. You're not doing it because somebody else told you to. You're doing it because you love him. And you want to know more about him. See, when you fall in love with somebody, you want to be around them all the time. You want to be with them. You want to learn about them. You want to get to know them. I've been in love with my wife a long time now. We've been married a long time. She's up here today talking. I said, man, I love that girl. I like that woman right there. I'm in love with it. When I tell you right now, I'm just as much in love with her as I was. And I got news for y'all. After this service is over, don't call me on Monday. Don't call me on Tuesday. And don't call me on Wednesday. Because I'm going to spend some time with my favorite person besides the Lord. And that is my wife. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because contrary to what anyone might think, I love being married to that woman. I love being married to her. <laughs> But see, we'll never start to release revelation until established truth is settled. Once established truth is settled, it will begin to eliminate distractions. It will begin to eliminate hindrances in your life if you apply it. If it goes in one ear and out the other, it won't accomplish anything. You've got to receive what's being said. When the Word of God comes and says, look in your life for areas that are hindering you. Look in your life for distractions. Target those distractions. Focus on with prayer, with attention, with seeking God. How to get those elements out of your life. Let me ask you a question. How many of you this week said, God, I need to get some things out of my life. I need to clear them up and take them out. What were they? Come on, what were they? Yeah, but you asked them to come out, but what were they? Did you investigate it and say, God, I've been battling lust. You need to take lust out of my life. Come on, Lord, I've been battling, not having good imagination. My imagination trying to get evil. I cast it down, and I bind it in the name of Jesus. You know what the laziest thing the Christians do is? They don't cast it. They meditate. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. The number one thing wrong with Christians, you need to learn how to cast down. Every time you get a stupid idea, every time you get something pop up in your head, you think it's funny, you think it's cute, run it through the Holy Ghost. And if it don't make it through the Holy Ghost, sit down and shut up. Ain't nobody want to hear that. Sit down and shut up. Ain't nobody want to hear that. See, right standing means you have had a relationship. You had it. See, with an established truth, God is starting to show you who you can be. He's starting to show you what He can do in you. But see, it takes a Because what established means is that the truth that you're receiving has a mission. The truth that you're receiving has a destiny. The truth that you're receiving is going to lead you to righteousness. It's going to take you the right standing with God. But when it's not 
establish truth. Then it's truth lift up to personal perception. Come on, hear me. Then it becomes truth as I see it. It becomes truth as I feel about it. It becomes truth as it doesn't offend me. Then it's my truth. And that's probably the best term you say. It is your truth. But it is not his truth. His truth requires, you listen to me, for established truth, it requires equal portion of word, equal combination of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings illumination. The Holy Spirit brings understanding. When you apply, the Holy Spirit provides ability to complete, ability to finish. So this is why God does not understand when you look at him and say, God, I can't do this. God, I can't make this happen. God, I don't know what I'm going to do. So what are you talking about? I've given you established truth. I've given you the ability to bring your flesh under subjection. I've given you the ability to say no to your flesh. It's time you stand up and begin to realize the spiritual inheritance you have received. Act like the man and woman that I called you to be. Stop acting like a child. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. All right. Something you need to know. Right standing in relationship with God or not. If you're not going to maintain an active relationship with God, don't be surprised if His presence begins to drift from your life. Because you made the choice, not Him. You chose. I got other things to do. I got all this going. And God comes to you and says, did you pray about all this? Or did you just do it? Well, I needed to. I thought about it. I thought it was a good idea. First mistake, right? You thought. So you understand something. When God sends you, things happen. When you send yourself, it's a failure every time. Don't send yourself. If you're doing something, make sure you prayed about it. If you're standing somewhere, make sure God told you to stand there. If you're running somewhere, make sure God told you to run. Otherwise, sit down. Amen? Here's the key, my friend. Where there is no relationship, there is no right standing. Hear me, no relationship, no right standing. Where there is no right standing, there is no righteousness. And where there is no righteousness, there is no revelation. And where there is no revelation, there is no understanding of the mystery. And where there is no understanding of the mystery, there is no established. Are you understanding me? You look at the process. You see what God's going to make you do to get through that process. Amen? If you're going to get in that process, it starts with established truth. As you begin to establish truth, as you begin to apply that established truth, it begins to line you up in correct relationship with God. Do you understand? Established truth releases the information, the knowledge, and the understanding to put you in alignment with God. Now you are in alignment with God. Now relationship starts taking place. Now you begin to consciously seek God for understanding. You consciously come to God and ask Him before you act. Can you say praise God? So, then what happens? As the relationship begins to happen between you and the Lord, and you're faced with the difficulty, you're faced with the situation, you're faced with the problem, because of the relationship that you have with God, He provides you the right move of what you need. And you overcome that problem. You overcome that situation. And you realize the greater the relationship gets, the better I overcome. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. The better my relationship gets, the better I get in right standing with God, Bishop, the more righteousness that is produced through me by my Heavenly Father. Woo. The more I overcome, I overcome my flesh, overcome my evil imagination, overcome my neighbor's evil imagination. Overcome every situation and circumstance that rises against me. And then what begins to happen? I notice it. I can overcome it. All these elements in my life. 
I've been overcoming distractions. I've been overcoming hindrances. Me and the Lord, we're doing good right now. I hear his voice. I can hear his voice right now, man. It's the loudest day. I hear it right now, man. I can hear it. And all of a sudden, you lift up your hands and you enter into the presence of God. Ooh, so you spread it out. That anointing begins to just slip all over. That anointed oil begins to fill you. And now the thing that you're saying, you're not just overcoming things, but you're overcoming things with a conquering, victorious attitude. You're overcoming things with a conquering, victorious such as you say, wait a minute, man. I'm not just here on my own. I'm not here to speak my own words. I'm not here to deliver my own message. I'm here to say whatsoever the Lord God said to me. I want to speak not my words, but his words. And I want to speak it by the power and the anointing of God. And then something happens. That anointing breaks out. Think about this, girl. When you get into right standing with God, when you get in that place where righteousness now has control, you begin to overcome all the problems, the situations in your life, all the battles and the struggles. The anointing begins to increase. When that anointing begins to increase, something happens. You got established word in there. You got the word, you got the spirit. You got the fire, you got the wine. Oh, come on, you only listen to me. You got the fire and you got the wine. But there's just one more element you need. You need that oil. Oh, come on, hear me now. You can't do it without the oil. See, here's God's last part of the puzzle. You can have the fire. You can have the wine. But without the oil, you ain't never going to get this thing. Without the oil, you're not going to walk into the fullness of it. See, here's what begins to happen. As you begin to overcome all the problems in your life, and as anointing begins to increase, and it hits that fire, and it hits that, it hits that fire, and it hits that anointing, hits that wine, and that fire, and that oil hits, something happens. All of a sudden, something starts running. All of a sudden, something starts building up in here. All of a sudden, something starts happening in here. All of a sudden, something starts getting great in here. And then what happens? Man, revelation begins to pour out of you. Revelation. Revelation about what? Revelation about my relationship with God. Revelation about what He's done for me. Revelation about the things that I've overcome. Revelation and anointing to finish the work that God has placed in me. This should be the corporate roar of the church. Righteousness. Overcomers, anointed the revelation. Can you say praise God? Feel with me. But herein lies the problem. Since we've eliminated the five foe, we've eliminated the miners who mine revelation. So since no revelation can be mined, none can be proclaimed. Since none can be proclaimed, none can be established. Since none can be established. None can be achieved. Let me tell you something. Maybe you're around a very powerful man or woman of God. And you hear them minister. And you hear them preach. Maybe they're an apostle. Maybe they're a prophet. Maybe there's somebody who is a revelation miner. They're going to mine revelation. That's what they do. Amen? That's what they do. Revelation is essential. For vision and direction. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? It is not necessary for the proclaimer to find revelation. Y'all aren't listening to me. It's not necessary for the establisher to find revelation. It's not his job. It's not responsible for the educator to find a revelation. Go back to the five and think about this. You can not have vision without revelation and perspective to know what you're seeing. You cannot have direction and guidance until revelation has declared the path to walk, until revelation has shown you where to go. So of the five foe, it is the prophets and the apostles that are the revelation makers. See, they mine it. Then the proclaimer goes, yeah, and proclaims it. Then the pastor goes, oh, oh, man, that's what we need. Church, you need to listen up. We're going to establish this in your heart. We're going to get this down. You remember what the apostle said and what the brother said? This is what we're going to do. Bam, 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 bam. And they establish. They break it down so you can establish. And then the teacher's educated. 
and they take it down book by book. So you can see all of it is linked to Revelation. All of it is linked to Revelation. Now, my mother and I had a little bit of a discussion on this issue. There was a time in my life, and I believe without a shadow of a doubt, all you had to do is just seek God with all your heart, mind, and soul. Pray and seek God, and he reveal everything to you at any time, any point, any way. God came to me and said, oh, I'll reveal it all to you. I'll give you the manifold wisdom of God. He said, but I got a process. He said, I got a way to do it. See, I don't lock, I don't put all my eggs in any one basket. He said, I got apostles for vision. I got prophets for direction. I got evangelists for proclamation. I got pastors for establishment. And I got teachers for education. What I need is a church that will begin to come together under the anointing and the spirit of God. A church that will come together without jealousy or envy or strife. But begin to understand what your position is in the fivefold. If you're a pastor, establish. Stay away from revelation. You don't have the perception for it because you weren't called to do it. Y'all ain't, listen, y'all get mad at me. But this is the word of God. It's not me, it's the word of God. And my mom's the one who showed it to me. My mama told me something one day. This is what she told me, Bishop. She said, listen, God don't let everybody mind that revelation. She said, that's a gift. So God gives you a gift to see it in a certain way. He gives you a gift to perceive it in a certain way. So you don't give that to everybody. I said, oh, mama, anybody attached has got to see God. She said, no. Let me explain something to you. I said, watch. She said, I've been serving God a lot longer than you. She said, I study way more than you do. And I go, mama, she goes, no, you got kids, wife, all that other stuff. I study more than you do. I said, the only one I see every day is Jesus. Come on. She says, I study more than you do. I pray more than you do. And I've been serving God longer than you. My mother, if you knew her, she was a fabulous teacher. One of the best you ever hear. And she said, yet, God has never showed me. Come on, he's never showed me nothing like that. He never showed me nothing like that. She said, I was the teacher. But she said, there came a time when I realized I was the pupil. I was not the teacher anymore. Amen. Praise God. And she said, it's not because I don't study. It's not because I don't pray. It's not because I haven't served God. It's because God's got a purpose. God's got a plan for you. God's anointed you for something. God's give you a gift and ability to mind revelation. She said, that's that revelation is mine. God is going to equip you with the ministers and the people and the ability to deliver that revelation to the world. Amen. So. No relationship, no right standing. No righteousness, no revelation. No mystery, no escape. Amen? So we have to know what the mystery is to truly be established, right? Let's see. Go meet in Romans 16. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 16 and uh, 22. Did I say 20? Romans 16, yeah, 22. I can read the whole thing about the 16. We'll go 16, 25. Now to him that is the power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. So we have to have the revelation of the mystery. Is that right? Who else would get that from reading that? That's what I get from there. According, that means you can't do it without. According means you have to have it. According means mandatory. According to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began. But now he gives you a key to unlocking it. But now it is made manifest. And by the scriptures of the prophet, according to the commandments of the everlasting God, made known unto all nations for the obedience of faith to God, only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever and ever. What say? How do we begin to unlock? How are you going to begin to unlock Revelation? By the scriptures. By the scriptures of the prophet, by understanding it, by comprehending it, by not looking at the surface material, but by being able to get the spiritual concept, by being able to get the spiritual understanding of it, because God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. He said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. He said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind daily. You need to understand something. This process is essential in the growth and development of the Lord. He said it would be made known. This mystery, this revelation, would begin to present itself through the scripture. 
through the word of God, through the spirit, through the anointing of God. And he said it would be presented in such a manner that all the world would someday know. All the world would be able to embrace it. And come to it. Well, people misunderstand this. He didn't say you would be able to go and get it for yourself. I'll show you in a minute how he tells you to get it. But see, right now in the Bible, he's telling you it comes through the scripture, but you got to have the right elements gleaning it from the scripture. Are you listening to me? You need those prophets and apostles. They're your vision miners. Come on, hear me. They're your vision miners. As they begin to mine that vision out, as they begin to mine that vision out, the evangelist gets excited. The spirit gets excited. And the evangelist begins to proclaim what the vision is. The evangelist begins to proclaim the anointing and the power of that vision. The prophet, he directs the apostle. This is apostle. Let's go. Apostle, that passes muster. Let's go. And you've got the pastor. He says, Ooh, I got the vision. The prophet says it's good. The evangelist is proclaiming it. I can stand. See, people wonder where that process came from. Where evangelists come to your church and hold a revival and then they leave. That's proclaimers. They're not establishers. They're not there to establish you, they're not there to counsel with you. They're not there to have private sessions with you. They're there to proclaim the excitement about a revelation that is brought into our world. And then when the pastor hears that, he establishes his church in that. And when he establishes, the teacher educates him on the same thing. But now listen to me, church. When you remove the apostles, when you remove the prophets, there is no vision. And so now, what does the evangelist proclaim? What does the pastor establish? And what does the teacher educate? We wonder why there's no fire. We wonder why there's no power. We wonder why there's no anointing in our churches today. It's because we have to repent and submit ourselves to the proper leadership, to the leadership that God called. Not the leadership you created, but the leadership that God called. Apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists for the perfecting of the saints, for the settling and establishing of the church. Now He said right here, the scripture, Start that revelational process. Now he's going to tell you who gets that revelational process. Go me to Ephesians. I'm almost done, so it is. I don't know if you enjoy this, but I do. Paul in his letter to the church at Ephesus. Look what it says. For this cause, I, Paul, am a prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me toward you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the what? How do you make the mystery known unto Paul? By what? By what? That means Paul had righteousness. It helped him overcome. The anointing released his calling, purpose, man, and ability. And when it did that, he understood revelation. Revelation came and showed him mystery. Amen? Now look what he says. As I wrote a four in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now listen, this is powerful. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This is the same man that told them about the prophet. This is the same man that said there are apostles, uh, uh, prophets, pa evangelists, pastors, and teachers. He told them that. Why did he separate the other four in this equation? Why did he not just say the fivefold leadership? Why didn't you say God's leadership? He specified. Holy apostles and prophets. Why? Because in order for them to carry out their offices, in order for them to be what God has called them, intended them to be, they must have the ability to mine revelation. If they don't, that is not the 
and you say, praise God. No. But there's something else we need to realize. Sometimes there are people, let's see someone get up and preach. I mean, had it happen sometimes to myself. Someone see him, they'll try to get up and be like them. Don't be like them. Be like Jesus. The hope of glory. See, the thing is, it's about discovering and understanding. It's about coming to that place of adventure, of recognition, of encounter with God. When you begin to know who you are and who God is in you, stop trying to find an office for yourself. Stop trying to find a position for yourself and just sit and say, God, I love you. God, I want to be everything you call me to be. And as you continue to walk with God, as you continue to be exposed to His anointing, His spirit, and His revelation, your calling will organically present itself. And when it presents itself, you will have all the characteristics necessary to carry out the task that's been lined before you. See, we want to put this man's work. We have to subject ourselves to the Spirit of God. Amen? He says, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise. Amen. Partakers of the promise. Amen. So here's what we're looking at, folks. If we're going to restore the roar to the modern day church, we've got to disassemble our idea of what we think leadership is. We've got to come and begin to till up the fallow ground of how we built our churches. We've got to begin to realize we're not in the business of trying not to offend you. We're not in the deal of trying to tell you some candy coated Cracker Jack message, make you feel good today, but tomorrow you'll be right back where you started from. Let me tell you something. We want to be in a place where revelation is not an intent. Revelation is an action. Oh, come on, hear me. Revelation is not something we just dream of. Revelation is not just an intent we hope to get someday. Revelation is an action. We get it, we take it, bam, put it into operation. And I'll tell you, you'll see a transformation happen so fast in your life. You'll be manifesting Jesus before you know. You will. But without application, you can't change. Without application, you'll always remain the same. Like who you are. Make up your mind this morning, church. Are you going to have a roar? Or are you going to let the enemy steal it? You're going to let the enemy steal it from you. It is time, like never before, that the church set its attention, set its affection on relationship with God. It's time that we comprehend and understand that it's more than just words on a page. It's more than what brother so-and-so said or sister Billy Jean said. It's more than all that. It's about an encounter. It's about God coming in and actually changing you from the inside out. Inside out. Let me tell you something. When the church gets its roar, when the church has a revelation or roar, the devil can't stand against it. Can't nobody stand against it. Honey, when the church roars the way it's supposed to roar, when the church begins to release into the atmosphere the revelation and the understanding of God that needs to be loosed in these last days, it will disassemble and break down all the hindrances the enemy has put in place, all the blockades and everything the devil's done to try to stop it, but not be able to stop it because whatsoever God desires will be done. And he desires you to roar. Come on, you're not hearing me. He desires you to roar. What's he want you to be, Bishop? He desires you to roar. He wants you to have righteousness. He wants you to be an overcomer. He wants you to be anointed. He wants revelation to move on you from the top of your head to the soul of your feet. It's up to you. Are you going to roar? I can't hear you, church. You're going to roar? I can't hear you, church. You're going to roar? You listen to me tonight. I don't care where you go to church. I don't care where you decide to. Serve the Lord as long as you know God sent you and God told you to go. 
One thing I better tell you, they better have the five faith. They better have the equipment necessary to mine revelation. They better have the equipment necessary to process revelation. They better have the stuff necessary to manifest revelation. I'll make you a promise. Revival for Christ is a church that's got revelation. We've got revelation. We process revelation. We manifest revelation. We are a revelation generation. Come on. Don't, don't let revelation be this far distant concept that you just breathe. Let, let revelation be action produced because of relationship put into you by the anointing of God to declare his word to the world. Amen? How many of you love Jesus? Every volunteer is worth It praying. is our sincere prayer and honest desire that the message that you just witnessed was a blessing and encouragement to you. Our goal is for you to be everything that God has called you to be. We want to encourage you to step out, identify the calling and purpose that God has put in your life, and let it come to complete purpose in God's will and in His plan. Now, we'd like to hear from you. You can write us at Revival for Christ Club, P.O. Box 777, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73160. That's P.O. Box 777, and it's more Oklahoma, 73160. I get the Oklahoma City. That's what they used to call Yes, and also, you can also message us on Facebook. We would love to hear from you. And yes. As we close out this program, I want everybody to know how much we and my husband, yes. we love you guys. Yes. And if you send us your prayer requests or let us know, we will take the moment and the time to pray over those requests. And we want you to know to bring a program like this to you and around the world, it takes a lot sometimes. So if you'd like to support it in some way, maybe make a donation and offering, pay attention at the end of the program, and they'll tell you how you can be a part of this great ministry outreach, how you can help Revival for Christ Club stimulate and turn revival around the world. Let's put Satan where he belongs. Satan, ha, 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 you are defeated, and Jesus is Lord. And it couldn't be any other way. We look forward to seeing you next week right here every Monday and Thursday on the CFAN Christ Family Apostolic Network when we know God has something special for you. Hello, my name is Ryan Colley. I am the Administrative Vice President and International Evangelist of Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. We thank you so much for tuning in, and if you would like to support, there are many ways you can do that. First, you can do it by phone, by credit card, 405-793-1777. You can support also by mail at 1005 Southwest 4th Street in Moore, Oklahoma, 73160. Also, if you have the Cash App, it's money sign RFC R O A R. That's RFC Roar. Thanks so much for tuning in again. We are Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. We are a ministry with a vision. Build our plan, the Word of God. Thank you and God bless.